One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, Fournette. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And today, originally, what I was going to do is I was going to get on camera and give y'all my WrestleMania 35 predictions, but I know how niche I am. And I know the second you guys don't see the Jacksonville Jaguars in the title, you guys aren't going to click on it. So what did I do? I made a little spin on things, a little spin on WrestleMania that I think you guys will enjoy. It's going to be what if Jacksonville Jaguar players participated in WrestleMania. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first annual Duval Mania. I got a whole card of matches. Uh, some of them are funny. Some of them make a lot of sense. Like if, like my world championship match, you would be like, oh yeah, those those who would be those who those would be who would be in those matches. But there are some Jaguars of the past. There's actually quite a bit of them, and some Jaguars of now because WWE likes to rely on nostalgia. So Treeb and his Duval Mania also likes to rely on nostalgia, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, this is the Duval Mania one card so everybody knows there wouldn't be a wrestlemania without the pre-show ladies and gentlemen so in the pre-show instead of the andre the giant memorial battle royal it's the jacksonville jaguars you forgot battle royal some of the participants include cecil shorts the third justin blackman ernest wilford Andre Branch, Cinderic marks todd bowman and Derek cox now the early winner uh, projected for this matchup is going to be Cinderic Marks because he is just so huge. How is anybody? How is anybody going to toss Cinderic Marks over the top rope? And that was the story of this match. Cinderic Marks lasted up until the end. He eliminated Ernest Wilford, Todd Bowman, and Derek Cox in dominant, dominant fashion. But former drug addict wide receiver Justin Blackman was also putting in the show during the final three, eliminating Cecil Shorts the third. So you got big stout Justin Blackman going up against 300-pounder Cinderic Marks in the finals of the Jacksonville Jaguars. You forgot Battle Royal, and they traded blows left and right. Cinderic Marks was about to run off the off the ropes and toss Justin Blackman over the top ropes, but Justin Blackman takes down the top rope, and Cinderic. Derek Marks goes tumbling over the top rope. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Justin Blackman is your winner for the first ever Jaguars You Might Have Forgot Memorial Battle Royal and kicks things off on Duval Mania with a victory. And now we are on to the main card, ladies and gentlemen. To kick off the main Duval Mania card, we have a cruiserweight title ladder match between Dee Dee Westbrook, AJ Boye, Keelan Cole, Chris Conley, Ronnie Harrison, and DJ Chark. These are the six men that have made Duval 205 Live. This is why people tune in. The battle between DJ Chark and AJ Boye has gained some five-star ratings from Mr. Tree Meltzer on the Duval Observer. And they are now going to be clashing with four of the other best cruiserweights in the world. And they are in Duval Wrestling Entertainment, ladies and gentlemen. So this match kicks off and there's a lot of high spots. AJ Boye intercepting Keelan Cole with a double drop kick to the face. Chris Conley and Ronnie Harrison were trading blows on top of the ladder trying to capture the Cruiserweight Championship to be the Cruiserweight Champion of Duval Wrestling Entertainment. But AJ Boye tips the ladder over. And in the final sequence, Dee Dee Westbrook is climbing up the ladder to regain his Cruiserweight Championship. But right on the other side, Ronnie Harrison from the top rope jumps midway up to the ladder and we got a battle going on on top of the Ladder, we got Ronnie Harrison, we got Dee Dee Westbrook battling for the Duval Cruiserweight Championship. Who is going to get it? And on a last second, in Seguri to Ronnie Harrison, Dee Dee Westbrook holds up the JWE Cruiserweight Championship after a brutal, brutal ladder match between these five athletic cruiserweights. And Dee Dee Westbrook survives and regains his JWE 
I mean, his DWE Duval Wrestling Entertainment, not Jacksonville. I decided that during the intro. So, D.D. Westbrook regains his Cruiserweight Championship and is reigning wild on DWE 205 Live. The next match on the card is the Duval Wrestling Entertainment United States title match between... Brandon Linder and James O'Shaughnessy. Why did I pick Brandon Linder and James O'Shaughnessy to be participating in the United States Championship match? For one simple fact, and that is they seem like they are the most American Jaguars on the roster, especially Mr. Brandon Linder, who has been the longest reigning United States champion in DWE history ever since he came into Jacksonville. This man has been walking and talking and defending his United States championship, and against James O'Shaughnessy, that was no different. These two have been building a match for weeks, talking about who hunts better, who listens to more country music, and who can gut a full can of chew. These two men are going to be meeting in the main stage, coming up next. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, and we got James O'Shaughnessy and Brandon Linder going back and forth in the middle of the ring. James O'Shaughnessy, big lariat in the corner to Brandon Linder. Linder looks like he is in trouble, but BAM! Quick super kick right into the face of James O'Shaughnessy. Brandon Linder climbs to the top rope and hits his famous side flip belly flop right onto James O'Shaughnessy to get the one, two, three. Mr. Brandon Linder regains his United States Championship of Duval Wrestling Entertainment and continues the longest reign of any champion in Duval Wrestling Entertainment. Coming up next, we have the DWE Tag Team Championship match. The Duval Boys of Malik Jackson and Calais Campbell will be defending against the Allen Bros. The Allen Bros and the Duval Boys have had consecutively elite tag team wrestling matches. But with the rumors of Malik Jackson leaving DWE, that leaves the door open for the Allen Bros to finally finally capture their first ever DWE championship, but you got two 300 pounders across the way from you, how are you going to get this done? Oh, to start off the match, Malik Jackson and Calais Campbell are taking apart Alan Hearns, focusing on his injured ankle that he hurt during the Dallas Cowboy game. That's what happens when you work two really hard jobs of a professional football player and a professional wrestler. His ankle was not all the way heel, healed, but Calais Campbell, Malik Jackson looking like true monsters, keeping him in the corner, making sure he doesn't make a tag until Malik Jackson gets a little bit too comfortable. Alan Hearns starts punching him in the face, he gets him rolling, and then bam! Damn. Quick drop kick. Everything Alan Hearns had. The crowd is going wild. Everybody is waiting for Alan Hearns to make the hot tag to Alan Robinson, and he does. He knocks Calais Campbell off the apron, focusing all of his attention on Mr. Malik Jackson, and he is going to work left hand, right hand, drop kick, top rope, elbow drop, and he misses Malik Jackson, lining it up in the corner for his famous finisher. And Alan Hearns, Alan Robinson moves Alan Hearns with an elbow to the face and a reverse neck breaker. The finisher of Alan. Alan Robinson right to Malik Jackson, and that is your pinfall. The Allen Bros are the new Duval Wrestling Entertainment Tag Team Champions. Next up, we have the Intercontinental Championship match, the title that is known for being put on the waist of the biggest workhorse in the business, and that's why we got Paul Puzlesny taking on Brad Meester for the Intercontinental Championship. Two men that to define the word great, they have worked their whole entire lives and have never really gotten a world title match, but they have held it down with the Intercontinental Championship for quite some time. These two have been feuding throughout the year. This is their big blow-off match, and a last man stay Standing match. This time it's personal. Paul Puzlesny and Brad Meester battering each other with everything they could get their hands on until BAM! A big steel chair shot right into the head of Paul Puzlesny, but his neck is so thick that it does not affect Paul Puzlesny. He's taking chair shots to the head like it's not even phasing him. And Mr. Brad Meester is looking scared. He's looking confused until Paul Puzlesny takes the steel chair away from Meester, batters him in the head with it, and he is down until an eight count. Brad Meester gets right back on top. Both men battling on top of the on the top rope. The announcer table right in sight. These two big men are gonna implode the announce table as Paul Puzlesny sends Brad Meester 
through the announce table. These men are struggling. Which man is which man's gonna get up at the count of ten? Paul Puzlesny is on the ground. He can't get up, but he relies on the power of his neck. He sits up, he bridges up at nine, ten, and Paul Puzlesny with the power of his neck is able to regain the DWE Intercontinental Championship. Coming up next, we have the most anticipated match on the card, or at least one of them. It's the battle of the billionaires, Wayne Weaver versus Shad Khan. But these two old men are not wrestling. They are going to be picking their participant and who they want to defend their honor in this match. It is who is going to own the Jaguars. We got Marcel Darius representing Shad Khan versus John Henderson, who is representing Wayne Weaver. John Henderson, of course, has the longest DWE undefeated streak as this man was not able to get hurt he'd take multiple hits to the face and he would just laugh it off and sometimes scream right in your face that he loved the pain that you were inflicting on him Marcel Darius though he's no joke either these two have never met one on one but they are going to do it for the first time at Duval Mania and for Shad Khan and Wayne Weaver's honor these two matched up and they were trading chops left and right a heavy hitting battle between two super heavyweights in the middle of the ring what is going to happen ladies and gentlemen Marcel Darius chops to the face it's not affecting Henderson Henderson scoops up the 300 pounder power slam and this match was over before it even started until Shad Khan puts Marcel Darius's foot on the ropes and Shad Khan Wayne Weaver attacking Shad Khan Weaver dips and a spear as he fixes his mustache John Henderson looking confused as this goes on and then Marcel Darius with a roll up the 300 pound roll up one two three and Shad Khan regains control of the Jacksonville Jaguars and will remain the owner in the battle of the billionaires as Marcel Darius picks up the cheap win over John Henderson via a roll-up. Next up, we take the winner takes over the football operations of the Jacksonville Jaguars. We have Doug Marone versus Jack Del Rio versus Gus Bradley versus Mike Malarkey. Everybody's wondering to themselves, why did Gus Bradley get thrown into this match? Well, he makes his big Duval Mania entrance. He's in the ring with all of these coaches of the past and current, and he goes out of the ring. He grabs a mic, and what does he do? He keeps cheering on his competitors, saying, as long as you work hard, you can take care of the Jacksonville. Jaguars. So Gus Bradley's in the back giving up all these pep talks. He is in there talking about moral victories. No matter who comes out of this is going to be the winner. And Doug Marone and Jack Del Rio meet in the final sequence before the baloney slam by Doug Marone and Jack Del Rio sends him one Two, Gus Bradley breaks up the pinfall, throws Doug Marone over the top rope, and he takes a sneaky pinfall over Jack Del Rio. One, two, three, ladies and gentlemen, it is what everybody was dreading. Gus Bradley takes the victory and will take over all football operations of Duval here at Duval Mania with a cheap sly victory over these other former coaches and Doug Marone has been fired and Gus Bradley is going to be taking his space. What does that mean for the Jaguars of the future? You are going to have to tune in to Duval Raw to get that answer. Next up in the co-main event, the biggest free agent signing Duval Wrestling Entertainment has ever signed in Nick Foles. Mr. Shad Khan slapped former DWE champion right on Nick Foles, but he is going to be facing a fan favorite, a man who has never been in the title picture, but everybody loves and everybody wants a chance. Everybody's against Mr. Nick Foles, but who is in the corner? We got Mr. Bud Light Blake Bortles in the corner. He is not going to take this from Nick Foles. Bortles has been here for five years. He has worked his ass off. He has not had an opportunity at the DWE Championship. And he is willing to put his career on the line against Nick Foles in a loser leaves Duval match. And these two go at it. It's a five-star classic between these two big men. And they go after each other. And then right at the end, Blake Bortles with his Bortles stunner to Nick Foles. The third one of the match. This one is for sure going to put him away. One, two, and Gus Bradley. Gus Bradley shows up on the sidelines right looking at Blake Bortles talking about come on man you got it congratulations he's confused he thinks he's helping root on Bortles Bortles it's like you just cost me the match there you turn around and it's the dick flop the dick flop that no one has ever kicked out of right on to Blake Bortles one 
two, three, and the fans' jaws hit the floor like Undertaker's WrestleMania streak just ended, and Blake Bortles is going to have to leave Duval, leaving everybody stunned. A big thank you, Bortles. Thank you, Bortles. Chant starts chanting worldwide. Blake Bortles sits in the middle of the ring, and he does it for one last time. He grabs a pack of Marb Smooth, takes his cigarette out, puts it in his mouth, lights it up. Fans are chucking Bud Light in the ring. He's having one last beer bash, and that is the last you will see Blake Bortles in Duval Wrestling Entertainment. And finally, in the main event for the DWE Championship, Mr. Fred Taylor is defending his title in a fatal four-way match against Maurice Jones, Drew, Jimmy Smith, and the up-and-coming Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey was a workhorse intercontinental champion for a really long time until Brandon Linder finally knocked him off, but he has been pressing and pressing and pressing until he got his chance at the JWE title match, and he is in it. Jimmy Smith, he's a former two-time DWE champion. Fred Taylor, the current champion. Maurice Jones drew a two-time champion. These are the elites of Duval Wrestling Entertainment, and they are taking each other on in the main event of the evening. Jimmy Smith is out early, going through an announcer table. In the final sequence, we have Fred Taylor, the champion, versus Maurice Jones drew until Fred Taylor shoulder tackle runs right through Maurice Jones Drew and says you were never ever like me right into his eyes talking about how he is the best running back in Jacksonville history until Jalen Ramsey comes out of nowhere backflips said Todd from the top rope and Jalen picks up the victory in his first ever Duval Wrestling Entertainment Championship in the process he stands it over and said I told you I was gonna win that bitch I told you I was going to win that bitch. The fans are going crazy. And the lasting image you see at Duval Mania is Mr. Jalen Ramsey holding high the Duval Wrestling Entertainment Championship belt. And that was, ladies and gentlemen, my Duval Wrestling Entertainment Mania card. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram at Trey Von Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody at work with me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.